You're all completely awesome. Um, and talking of awesome, he's just walked into the studio, that's all. If you want the greatest British runner of all time, who you gonna call? If you want gold medals and world records, who you gonna call? If you want a tip-top human being to talk about children with Cancer UK, who you gonna call? You're gonna call her! Paula! <laughs> yeah! Thank you. That might be the best intro Come I've ever on, had. Come on, it's great, awesome. isn't it? That's so cool. You excelled yourself there. How are you, Paula? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm too excited. Are you? Yeah, You're always excited. It's that time of year, isn't I it? I know, but I get more and more excited every year. I forgot everything today. I forgot my car keys. I'd spring it, borrow somebody else's car to get to work. I didn't set my alarm last night. First time ever. Yada, yada, yada. It's Maranoia comes in all shapes and sh- sizes and flavours, doesn't it? It does, and it never gets easier, like you said. Sometimes it just grows. Yeah, and you used to get it as well. Tell, yeah. tell us your experiences of the same kind of feelings well you, you i think it's a sign that it matters yeah uh, that's the thing if you're nervous if the adrenaline's pumping <laughs> if you're just forgetting things doing silly things it's a sign that it's something that really matters to right. you and this is definitely an event that matters have it's you got any standout memories of, of you really messing things up 24 hours before um no nothing <laughs> too bad i mean i i was I am quite an organised person, so I would lay out everything just to make sure that I can forget things and make sure three or four times that you've got two shoes and it's a right and a left shoe that you're packing in your bag. Simple as that. It's really important. Yeah. Things like that, because I do know people that have done that. Of course, course. keep the main thing the main thing. And and a lot of people running for the first time, you know, because they'll be so invested in it, as as we all are, but you you never run your first marathon twice, do you? You know that better than anyone. Um, They'll be thinking about the things that don't really matter, that they convince the somehow do matter keep mm-hmm. the main thing the main thing exactly keep the main thing the main thing keep it simple do not go out and experiment with a curry the night before stick with it, what you're used to remember to book that restaurant because they will fill up it's marathon week yeah. everybody is trying to get to the Italians and the pastas yeah. and so make sure you've booked all of that up and take your breakfast with you any like I mean you gave me some beautiful super tips that made it to the book um, uh, 10 years ago can't believe it's 10, 10 years ago years. it was actually 11 oh I, think, I think it was 11 years ago uh, so thanks for those um, going into tomorrow, I know it's a question you get asked a million times, but it, it's, it's we never get tired of hearing the answers. What should people be doing, do you think, tomorrow? Tomorrow is really about feet up. I mean, there will be that last minute rush to the expo, grab your number, but just try and keep it down to a minimum. Just look back on what you've done, on the preparation. And it's about what you've done, what you not what you haven't done. Because yeah. everybody's got bits that you couldn't do. Yeah. But it is about that solid picture of base on base on base and base. Yeah. I'm ready. And those techniques for going to when you're in that pain cave, when it's really hurting, remembering that everybody goes through that. There are ups and downs yeah. in the marathon. And to have your go-to ready to get through that rough patch and then ride the good patches. How were you before the, the marathon? Because I remember the first one in the Tower Hotel after that day, we had that lovely uh, risotto on the Friday, that was, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Then we had the Saturday. You were running that year as well, weren't mm-hmm. you? And um, and uh, I slept, I think I slept for about three and a half hours. Didn't matter in the end. In fact, I was just waiting to... to it's like it was the closest I've felt to Christmas Eve since I was a kid. Yeah, and that's um, I still go back to the best advice my dad gave me when I was about twelve or thirteen, and I said I can't sleep the night before a race. And he said, "Doesn't matter. It's the week before and the weeks before that, and it's that accumulation of solid sleep there. Yeah. Because if you don't sleep the night before, it's really going to make no difference at all, unless you worry about it." Yeah, and because as long as you're off your feet, that's the thing, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. It doesn't matter whether your eyes are closed necessarily. You know, if you can stay as calm as you as possible, you know, and be excited around your mates and other people that are running, but don't be too excited because there's, there's yeah. energy in that excitement. And excitement is, is good up to a point, isn't it? But you don't want it to just take away from what you're going to need tomorrow. Exactly. It's about having something to keep a lid on those nerves yeah. and escape from How, did you, do that? How did you do that? I used to read. I honestly just used to lose myself in Anything a book. But. I'm a massive bookworm. And I just used to take a book with me, find a quiet corner and just bury myself in that to take my mind away from thinking about the race. Yeah. Because there's enough time for that when you're in warm up, when you're thinking about race tactics and discussing those with your team and things like that. So aside from that, I used to just find a distraction. So it can be watching a movie, it can be reading a book, it can be listening to music, it can be anything that stops you thinking too much about the race until it's time to think about the race. That's fantastic advice. I've never heard it said like that before because basically what you're saying, you're confirming something that we heard last week, that your your brain can't think about two things at once. So if you're only tactic is... What's that? (laughs) If you're a man especially. Yeah, 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 especially. Um... 
but the, your brain can't think about two things at once. So if you, um, if you, I can't think of anything at the moment. <laughs> I can't think of one thing I want to do right now, to be honest. But if you, if your, if your tactic is, I'm going to try not to think about the marathon, that won't work because your brain always ignores mm. the word not. So the best thing to do is just do something else. Yeah. Because then it, you won't give it chance. Yeah, and do something that isn't burning too much physical energy yeah. at the same time. So what don't I, go what, for a walk. I, I do like watching people's um, YouTube videos. Um, there's been a lot this week about the Boston Marathon, which happened on Monday. There's one guy, we might play his clip later on before we go off the air, who was going for it. He's a sub three marathon runner, sub three hour marathon runner. Anyway, he's going for 2.45. His legs blew up. You know, after 10 miles, he said, they haven't shown up today. Sometimes that happens. He had great prep, you know, and he's, devastated and with like four or five miles he's thinking i've just got to get under three now i can't i can't go over three when i was going for 245 he's a sub three guy and he gets in in 259 and 12 and then he starts to reflect and then he does this brilliant piece to his phone piece to camera and for two and a half minutes he sort of gets to the point where he says, this has probably been my best marathon because i found out more about myself this time mm -hmm. and it, it you it's about how you frame it isn't it it is and it is a cliche but every single person gets to the finish line of that marathon and it doesn't matter if it's their 200th marathon or their first one you get to the finish line and you found out something a bit more about yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. you found out a little bit more about your strengths and your weaknesses and what makes you tick and also about what is so cool and special about the family of marathon running and it is that family that comes together and it's unique to the marathon no other sport has what we're hoping for on sunday over 50,000 people going through exactly the same emotions, the same course, the same event on the same day. And a women's world record, perhaps. Perhaps, yeah. What, what is your what are your feeling? What's the feeling in your water about that? It is a stacked, stacked field. And without a doubt, there is the, the capacity for them all to run extremely fast. Certainly, a safer seems to think she's in the same shape or better than she was in for Berlin when she set that phenomenal world record so I think it could go really quickly or they could run tactically and just make sure that they're coming out of it with a victory and saving a little bit of energy because it is the Olympic Games it in is, Paris in the summer and it's you know in marathon terms it's quite close it's fairly close yes because Elliot says I don't know what you say about this but he says you've got two really sort of you can rinse yourself twice a year mm -hmm. marathon wise what do you think yeah I think that that's true I think you can run more than two marathons a year yeah. But at maximum effort, then it starts to get really tough and the Olympics only comes about every four years. Yeah. And you want to make sure that you're right. And it's a very, very tough course in Paris. It, it's, a, it's a great course. It'll be a brilliant course for watching. Um, and I would have loved to race it, but it is a tough course. So right. I think wow. you've got to be going in ready. Exciting. Exciting for you in the commentary box with Steve as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, so this year you are more than um, uh, representing childrenwithcancer.org.uk. Tell us about that. Tell us why it's so close to your heart. Uh, tell us what you you're an ambassador for these guys now and your congratulations yeah. well done i know you're going in your capacity um as an ambassador for children with cancer U uh, uk to the expo later today just tell us a bit about that um well they're a great charity um and we've got 1200 runners taking part on wow. sunday raising we hope over three million pounds uh, and incidentally Come on. we hope that that's a lot of money too. In itself is going to break its own record of the greatest amount raised for charity in a single event on a single day, yeah. which I think is 66.4 million pounds from 2019. Record, yeah. That's a world record, and the marathon itself is hoping, hoping to break that. And I think children with cancer runners within that. Um, so it's basically, I mean, 4,500 children or young adults are diagnosed with cancer each year in the UK alone, and there's not really a reason that. 100% of those shouldn't be able to ring that bell at the end and come through it because childhood cancer is more beatable than um, than adult cancers. And so children with cancer is all about trying to make that difference. So to find out why, the causes, to look for cures and to support the families going through it as well. And so Brilliant. we're all about just trying to put as much towards that as possible. The, the love, the, 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 the collective love, the harmony of the human spirit on Sunday is unsurpassed, mm. isn't it? Yeah. In the world, anywhere on a regular basis than at the London Marathon. It's overwhelmingly beautiful. It is. And I think there's something about runners, aren't there? They're just nice people. <laughs> runners are just nice people. You yeah, run through they the They weren't. That's why we all started running. <laughs> yeah. But we're getting nicer, aren't we, with every step? Every mile. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we do it, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I mean, I think everybody's interesting. You see, you run past a runner, you say hello, they say hello back. Yeah. 
Doesn't well, they do the first ten miles. Yeah. <laughs> Mile twenty. <laughs> Jury's out go, on that yeah. one. Um, you gave me the best tip ever um, when we had the, the, ten years ago, eleven years ago, whenever it was. Uh, you said to me, Chris, don't forget halfway is twenty miles. That's so important, mm. isn't it? It is. It's really, really important. It's all about patience in the marathon. It's all about knowing your pace, not getting carried away in those first few miles when you're all fresh, you're all rested because you've eased down for the race, all that marinoia has been spinning around. Yeah. <laughs> and you set off and you're right, I feel great. And then you get to mile three and it's downhill and you run even quicker down there. And just don't do it. Just put the brakes on. So it's a good thing if there are people in front of you and you can't go off too quickly. Yeah. Just be patient. Just sit with that. And then second half, then you can start picking it up. Then you can start feeling good. And when you get to 20 miles, then you can put just everything go you've it. got left. Just go for it. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Somebody said to me again this week, obviously loads of marathon chat in our house, you know what it's like. <laughs> um, and they said that if you do start off slower, what will happen is, so a lot of people get it wrong. And, you know, by the way, this is there's, there's no um, schadenfreude where that's concerned uh, because that's not how you feel if you're running. You don't want other people to not do well. You want everybody to mm. do well. But if you've paced it right, you will after about 13 miles more 15 16 you will very gradually start to overtake people and apparently that is a real sort of superpower yeah. isn't it just it is. the feeling of that adds to what however good your legs feel because you're doing that and they're not it, it, it makes that even more better doesn't it it does it's, so there's something i don't know whether it's a psychological brain chemical that, yeah. that's released or even if you're feeling really bad and you're feeling tired if you start passing people yeah. there is something that says okay actually maybe my mind's playing tricks maybe yeah. i'm not really feeling that bad because i'm going past people yeah. so you just get a little bit of an extra surge of energy and yeah it's, and you it's, don't it's want to be on the other side of that finish. play do you you don't want to be the pit person for i mean if you are no. whatever but if you get it right if you go slow in the first half you might not go any quicker in the first half it's just that there's that great phrase isn't about usain bolt he wins the 100 meters because he slows down the least least uh, compared to everybody else yeah. and in the 200 meters um he slows down he usually wins between by by or did win between 10 20 30 meters sometimes so it looks like he's going faster but everybody's slowing down mm -hmm. it's just that he's slowing down less quickly yeah than uh, but sometimes in the marathon it is possible to to really flip that and to actually finish your second half substantially faster than your first half yeah, here, that's we are. A nice here she goes <laughs> another <laughs> another myth maker that here people say that's what just is wrong stuff with this woman? people say i've got stats to back that up <laughs> and now, and you've got stats because you held the world record yes, for like <laughs> decades <laughs> Uh, no, by the way, talking about the world record, uh, Paula Radcliffe, she's sitting in front of us now, held the Women's World Marathon record from 2003 to 2019 with a time of 2 hours, 50 minutes and 25 seconds. She also ran and uh, won the London Marathon in 2002. Woo! 2003. Yay! And 2005. Woo! And then she decided to give somebody else a chance, for heaven's sake. Um... Now, we've been talking about our pacing ourselves, figuring out our spreadsheet. You know, I'm 10 and a half minutes for 20 miles. That's three and a half hours. Then hopefully the last six miles in 10 minutes. But it doesn't matter if I don't. I'm just going to try. And that will be 4.30 to 4.39. Did you go through a plan for your two hours, 15, 25? Or did you just go for it? It was, you know, I did have a plan. I absolutely had a plan. Um, the first plan happened so after i set the the world record in chicago in the october before right. that so i ran 217 18 there right. and i wanted to bring it back to london i wanted to to run that record in london so that was essentially the plan the whole winter just like train to get into better shape than i was in for chicago and so then i come into london and my entire race plan was based on running negative splits because i'd done that in the first london marathon i'd done that in chicago and i knew it was a nicer easier way to to run the marathon so that was the first plan go don't go through halfway too quickly Second plan was as many miles as possible under 5.13, which was the split time what? from Chicago. <laughs> what did that's you say? A, that's, 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 a, a, that's more unicorns so under 5.13 a mile. I must get, must get these ears shringed. <laughs> no, me too. I have to wait till Monday, though. Headphones. <laughs> say that again. So that was the, the only plan, basically. 5.13? 5.13 was the 5 average 13? pace. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Can't do that now. Actually, you lost interest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so so how's it looking with the commentary team, Steve? How's Steve? What's going on with you He's guys? He's good. Yeah, no, we're all excited, really excited. We're on air, I think, from before nine o'clock till yeah, yeah. three o'clock. So it's 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 a great day because you see all the sides of the marathon, and we've got the perfect seat of course, yeah. right on the bottom of the mall. You see all of that emotion as people turn the corner in front of Buckingham Palace. They see the finish line, and they know they've done it at that point, and yeah. it's great. Well, you are the absolute bee's knees. You are our superwoman, Paula Radcliffe. We love you so much. Children with cancer. Org.uk. Find out more and donate via those guys uh, for Paula and her gang. The TCS London Marathon 2024, this Sunday, 21st of April. Coverage begins on BBC One. It's half past eight. You've got to be there. Right. Okay. Latest. It's good I know that. All right. <laughs> so I think I've got to be there before because I've got um, to do some breakfast. And, and, and stuff before first. you go, Paula, Hugh asked us to ask you a story about your daughter, Isla. Yeah, about pushback. Apparently, <laughs> she, apparently you've got the ultimate mother daughter pushback story. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know that it's no. We were talking about it's him and his dad. So you know, mm-hmm. like like um, daughters and sons rebel against their own mum and dad, but they're yeah. happy to listen to other their oh, friends' mums and dads. Of course, but mum's never right, is it? I mean, yeah. it's like, but he said, you gotta... don't come to the track with me because you don't know what you're talking right. about. That's always <laughs> happened. But then she <laughs> she qualified for uh, with her team right. for the schools, the French national schools uh, cross country championships. Right. So I wasn't allowed to go and watch, and she's got a different. Because what do you know about yeah. running? No, no, that was because the embarrassment. It's embarrassing. Right, okay. to have me there um, so I sent her off with a different spikes configuration because it's cross country and I said okay you need the longer ones in the front so put the two longer ones in the front and the shorter ones in the back if it's muddy so the morning of the race I call her and I say is it muddy and she said yeah it is but um, thing is my friend told me to do it the other way around so I've put the long ones in the back and the short ones in the front <laughs> Because I don't know much about cross country, do I? How many times did you win the World Cross Country? How many cross country championships did you win? Three. Three. (laughs) That's hilarious, isn't it? That makes me feel so much better about Noah ignoring anything I ever tell him. (laughs) Yeah, but Mum, my friend said. I think that's going to make everyone feel better about all parental things ever. That should be put on notice boards around the world for mums and dads generally. Yeah, you think your kids don't listen to you? Listen to what Paula Radcliffe's daughter said to her. Uh, Paula, anything else you'd like to say to people listening? ahead of the weekend just huge good luck to everybody taking part and a huge thank you to everybody else who's going to go out and cheer on along the route because yeah. that is what makes London amazing so the organisers do a brilliant job the volunteers do an amazing job but all those people cheering and bringing the atmosphere yeah. thank you let's hear it for Paula Radcliffe everyone <laughs> <laughs>